you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to bless you today in the name of the Lord. I want to speak the blood of Jesus over you and your family and your household. I want to tell you this. I want to encourage you today. Live every day as if Jesus is coming tonight. But plan your life as if you're going to be here for the next 50 years. In other words, don't be lazy. Don't be slothful. Don't be wasteful. Live your life with excellence. And teach your children by your life the same. Because Jesus can come tonight. But chances are, he's not going to come for another 50 years. Everything is perfectly aligned for Jesus to come tonight. Everything. There's not one thing that is missing. All the things are fulfilled for him to come. But one day to the Lord is like a thousand years. So even though we're right on the cusp, even though we're right there for Jesus to come, everything is fulfilled. Our one day is like a thousand years. So we don't know how long the timing that's left will be before he comes. So live every day as if he's coming tonight. But plan your life as if you're going to be here. We're going to be here for another 50 years. Therefore, if you need to go get an education, you need to go get a certificate, you need to get married, whatever needs to be done, do it with excellence, bearing in mind that he might come tonight. So I want to say again, live every day as if Jesus is coming tonight. But plan your life as if we're going to be here for another 50 years. Live a life of excellence. Amen? So last week, we did part one of the message that we're known by Jesus, by the fruit of our lives. And we talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 20, wherefore by their fruits you will know them. Every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So our lives need to bear Good fruit because of the seed of the fruit that is already planted in our heart. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the character of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And as we allow that to work in our hearts it transforms us from the inside and bears fruit on the outside that Jesus knows us by in other words we can fake it to people but we cannot fake it to Jesus how do we allow fruits that we bear to be fruit that is acceptable to Christ? We study what his manual says. We study 
his character by the Holy Spirit. Do not study the Bible without the Holy Spirit's revelation, without the Holy Spirit's teaching. And as he teaches you and reveals the truth to you, the Bible says we're changed from glory to glory as if we're looking at ourselves in a mirror. Second Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So there's so much going on in us. Last night I was listening to these two young men talk about things that I don't fully comprehend, but I understand it, and I see it. And they were talking about how everything God precisely lined up. Everything is so perfectly aligned. Nothing is by chance. Like, the empty tomb, Mary finds the empty tomb with two angels, one at where he should have been at the head and one where he should have been at the tail, sitting there. And the linen cloth, and that symbolizes what the Old Testament priests were told by God to practice. The shadow of what was done, and now we see the reality, the ark with the two angels covering the mercy seat, the mercy seat where the holies of holies is, where only certain priests at certain times of the year can go behind the veil into the holies of holies dressed specifically in linen and when they're done sacrificing for the sins of the people they have to take their linen clothes off and lay it there before they go out of the holies of holies and we see that happening when Jesus died the veil of the temple tore signifying now we don't have to wait on a high priest to go behind the holies of holies to sacrifice for us. Jesus, our high priest, did the very last sacrifice for us. So now we can come boldly before his throne. What is it that you need today? I had a young lady call me because she said, I still don't have a job. At her job last year, things were done and this happens. That's what we have to learn. What thus says the Lord. What the blood of Christ means to us. What he did for us. And live it out. And stand on it. If not, the enemy will take advantage. That's his job. And so these people did not train her properly. But yet, they gathered together and talked about her, and took it to the head, who in turn says, we don't want you here, and we are going to have it so that you cannot be hired by anyone in this system. You can't do that to a human being, especially if that human being is not evil, especially that human being is an ordinary human being just like us, who needs to eat who needs to pay rent, who needs to take care of their family. You cannot do that. But when you get into a situation where people are gossiping and you don't heed the Holy Spirit, that fruit of the Holy Spirit that is working in you and get out of Dodge, you will find yourself, listen, I want you to hear this today. If you don't hear anything else, the power and the authority that we have as Christians in the name of Jesus, by his blood, 
and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that rests in us and upon us, we can bless the wrong thing. We can speak blessings out of our mouth. There's so many examples in the Bible, and I'll touch briefly on one. When Jacob told, I'm sorry, when Isaac told his son Esau to go prepare a meal and come, let him give him the last blessings as the head, as the older son, and Jacob's mom heard and told Jacob, you go in there. And you get the blessing. And she had him pretend to be Esau by putting on the animal's fur on his hand. So when Jacob, when, sorry, when Isaac touched him, he would feel like Esau. And that blessing was given to Jacob instead of Esau. When Esau came into the room and realized what was done, he wept. He says, Father, bless me. And, and Isaac says, I cannot give you the blessing. It's already been given to your brother. In other words, when we speak a blessing out of our mouth, it takes effect. And so we can get in a situation where we're gossiping and where we're talking and where we pronounce wrong on somebody. I'll never forget. Cheryl Gonzalez told me once, years ago, I was so angry with my husband. Years and years ago, I said something out of my mouth. And she says, take it back immediately. She says, your words have power as a prophet. Take it back quickly. You have to be careful, especially in these last days, with the enemy so busy, he knows his time is even shorter right now. And he wants as many as he can to be swayed away from the path of life. And so he'll do anything, anything. Where is your weakness? That's what he'll cling to, your weakness. So be careful. So they pronounce this negative on her. So she called me today and says, I, I can't, I, I don't have a job yet. And I says to her, your father loves you. Your father loves you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Yes, they got you out of that system, that school system. But they cannot stop your blessings. God will use that situation to get you away from a situation that's not good. But it doesn't mean that he's not seeing, he's not at work. And so I, I took authority and began to pray and begin to decree that she will get a job this week. Not any old job, but one where she can get up every day and feel the blessings of the Lord. Even if the job is stressful at times, as every job can be, she can still know this is God's will. Tears can come to her eyes as she blesses God. That's what I pray for her. That's what I pray for Cheryl today, that she will get that job in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. So what are you believing God for? No weapon. His blood. Oh, the power of his blood. What he did with his blood, his very own priceless blood. I had somebody tell me this weekend with finality and conviction that they don't believe that Jesus is God, is the Messiah. They respect him as a prophet, but that's it. And, you know, I, I, I just feel so sorry for that person in their ignorance, in their confidence of their ignorance. And, and, and how how confident they are. And the only thing that can save them is the blood of the sinless lamb, Jesus. God himself coming down to earth. And because of what he did, when he went back up to heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit 
to live and dwell with us and the Holy Spirit's character to be formed in us. So don't despair. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Just like it, just because it doesn't look good doesn't mean that God is not at work. He is at work. He's a father who loves his children with a complete love. His love is so complete that he gave himself. He allowed himself. The God of gods, the king of kings, allowed himself to be murdered for us. He gave up his throne, came down to earth as simple, humble humanity, born not with a gold spoon in his mouth, with a silver spoon in his mouth, not born in a palace, but born in a stable. Born in a stable, in an animal's tray. He did that for us. And it must not be hard for us to trust him, to allow him to develop in us the fruit of the Spirit. So last week we talked about love, not slappy agape, but that true love that will lay life down. We talked about the joy, which is our strength. We talked about peace, and in that peace is wealth contentment, safety, oh, so much health, because he is the king, he is the prince of peace, and he dwells in us, and we talked about long-suffering, and I'm going to pick up here, we ended with long-suffering, I'm going to pick up here and then continue, this is the one that I'm concerned about, we are so hungry so desperate for truth, so so combobulated, especially since 2020. The world has become so combobulated that they're desperately looking for spirituality, for truth, and they're opening up to witchcraft. They're opening up to obia, to voodoo. They're opening up to ancient spirits, ancestral spirits, which are not ancestral spirits of their family, but are demonic spirits who pretend to be their family. And so they're impatient. They're opening up, running like Saul did. God didn't speak to him. Instead of humbling himself before God and crying out to God, he went to a witch So long-suffering is one of the fruit, the fourth fruit of the Spirit. And we have to learn to wait on God. Wait on God. Today, we talked about love, joy, peace, long-suffering. The fifth one we want to start with today is gentleness. Gentleness. The Greek is Christotose. Christotose. Forgive my... Greek in my Hebrew, and it means moral goodness. This word gentleness is translated as moral goodness, as integrity, as benignity, as kindness. Listen, the fruit of the Spirit that is in us, if Christ is in us, is gentleness. That means we are kind. We're kind to the homosexual. It doesn't mean we accept what they do. No, we don't. Because that's sin and abomination. But we see beyond to the fact that they're a human being. And we're kind to them. It's integrity. We do what we say we will do. We be what we say we will be. And if we can't, we say why. It's this character in us. And one of the reasons why we don't trust God is because we are not trustworthy ourselves. We're not gentle 
and kind and patient like we ought to. We must see him reflected in us. Ephesians 2, 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he had loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ. By grace we're saved, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. That word is translated gentleness, the Greek. In his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest any should boast. For we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, who God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So we, it is so much there. The whole thing is that we're not just saved and then we go along our business. No, there's so much that goes on from the moment that we give our life to Christ. We become severed from the earth ties. We become severed from the ties of our parents, our forefathers, and we become hooked up to God by the blood of Jesus. It's like an umbilical cord goes up to heaven, fed by the blood of Jesus, directed by the Spirit of the Holy God. And he ordained this before the foundations of the earth, that we should walk in these fruit. We should walk by faith. It's not works. It's not us working this thing up. It's him in us our hope of glory. We don't sit in Lodi Bar anymore, in those low places. No. We need to see everything from above where Christ dwells. It's as if we look out the airplane and we look down and we see all the houses and the cars. They're so small. They look like little matchboxes or toys that we can just put our hands out the window and move them around. That's how we should see our problems. We should see our problems from heavenly places. We should see our problems under our feet, because that's where it is, because of the blood of Jesus. And so we've got this gentleness in us, because he, the gentle one, is in us. Philippians 2 3 to 4 says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. This is why so many marriages are not working. We're so, <laughs> my rights, my way, my wants, my truth. <laughs> it's not us serving each other. It's not us esteeming each other better. Hey, I'm married. I'm not saying it's easy. But with practice, with trust in the Holy Spirit, with shutting this mouth and going to the bathroom and crying out to Jesus, with with just choosing to be gentle and kind, choosing, like it says here, to esteem the other person better than ourselves. But no, we want to be better. So much pride. So much arrogance. Ugh. It's like the person who told me um, with such pride and such arrogance that they don't believe, they respect Jesus, but they don't believe Jesus is God. They don't believe Jesus is the one. Such arrogance, such pride. We must look not 
to our own things, it says in Ephesians 2, 3 to 4. But let every man look also to the things of others. That takes practice. But if Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew from chapter 5 to 7 where all the Beatitudes are, he tells us, love our enemies, pray for those who despitefully use you. You can love your husband. You can love your wife because they're not your enemy. If he says love your enemy, then you can love your children who are not living the way you want them to live. And remember, love is not sloppy agape. It's not accepting what they do. It's loving them despite of what they do with the eyes to the Father knowing that his goodness leads to repentance, that I'm believing, I'm loving them because I'm believing that God will get through to them. I know the scripture says in First. Corinthians chapter 7, that my children are sanctified by me. They're holy because of me. They can't get to heaven because of me. But because the Bible says they're holy because of me, that I'm believing that God right now is working in them, both to willing to do of his good pleasure, leading them away from the arrogant, foolish, sinful pleasures they're indulging in, and I'm believing that he's going to turn them to him. Same with spouses. Same with loved ones. Same with ourselves. So, the fifth fruit of the Spirit that we're talking about today is gentleness. And then the sixth one we want to look at is goodness. And this, the Greek word here, for this goodness is agatuse, agatusene, agatusene, and it's from the word agatos, which means a good constitution or nature. It means useful, good, pleasant, agreeable, joyful, happy, excellent, distinguished, upright, honorable. It means an uprightness of heart and life. It means kindness. So this goodness, somebody says, and I know it's true, if I am a good person, you and your family, your money, your reputation are all safe around me. If I am a good person, and I know I'm a good person, and that's why my, when my daughter was young, I had her friends come to my house. Because I know in my house, they'll be safe. I was a good person. I was going to make sure that they were safe. In that way, they were in my house. My daughter was getting to spend time with them, and I was watching over them. Instead of me sending her out to somebody else's house, and I don't know who they are. No, you don't send your, your people out. You don't send your children out to other people's house. Not in this day. Not in the stuff they got coming over. All it takes is one thing for your child to see. One thing to happen to your child. Just one thing for them to hear that will change their lives and the trajectory of their lives forever. You have to be careful what they see. You have to be careful what they hear. You have to be careful to protect their ear gates and their eye gates. If you don't, then it opens up all the other gates to demonic activity. So, if I am not a good person, then you cannot trust yourself, your children, your money, or anything around me. That's what good means. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus if we've asked the, Jesus to be our Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he has made him to be sin for us, him who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
So here's this sinless lamb, sinless God, who was made sin on the cross for us so he can take our place. Whatever sin we committed, murder, mayhem, rape, lie, stealing, whatever sin was is committed, was committed, he took that on the cross so that we can take his righteousness. So we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that, my friend, makes us good. If you're not living a good life, the Spirit is letting you know. You got to straighten up, the Spirit will tell you. And you don't straighten up by, oh, I'll do better. No, you straighten up by humbling yourselves under the mighty hand of God. It's not by works. It's by His Spirit in you. It's by His grace in you. But you have to turn your face to Him. You have to choose. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, when we come to Him, we become new creatures. Brand new. So we have to choose the new. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 11 tells us, Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Stop listening to all these. Oh, there's so many good orators, orators, especially on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Oh, they speak such beautiful, swelling words. Don't be swayed. The Bible says one of the signs of the last times is we'll heap to ourselves teachers that will tickle our ear gate. We'll, we'll speak to the sin in us to encourage us. You cannot allow that. Because God doesn't change because we believe a lie. God remains the same righteous God whose laws remain the same, whose requirements remain the same. So be not deceived. Stop believing people that said, oh, a righteous good God is not going to let you go to, he to hell just because you love somebody. Just because you're a man and you love a man, a hairy, ugly, stink man laying on top of another man because you love that God is not going to send you that is not love that is nastiness that is an abomination that is wickedness that caused Sodom and Gomorrah to be destroyed evil that is not love so stop being deceived let me continue 1 Corinthians 6 9-11 neither fornicators a fornicator is every person who has sex outside of God's idea of marriage. God instituted marriage between one man that was born a man like Adam and one, well, Adam was created, and one woman that was born a woman or created a woman like Eve. Not Eve and Madame or Adam and Steve, no, no, not idolaters, and that's what we do, we worship idols, men worshiping men, women worshiping women, and now men worshiping little children, idolaters, nor adulterers, that's three ways there, any sex outside of the marriage is adultery, nor effeminate. What's an effeminate? A homosexual. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. What's an abuser of themselves with mankind? Sexual nastiness. Women with women. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. If this is the lifestyle that you live. And I want to go back again to abusers of themselves with mankind. It's not just sexual sin. But also women allowing men to beat on them. Abuse them. Women allowing 
men to abuse their children. Ephesians 4.22 tells us, put off concerning the old man, the former conduct, all that deceitful stuff, and allow your mind to be renewed by the Spirit revealed word. And then put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we have to choose. We choose. He does the work. We choose. We say yes. It's like a marriage. It is a marriage. We say I do. There is no marriage if you don't say I do. 2 Timothy 1.11 Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So goodness is another fruit of the Spirit that changes us as the Holy Spirit works in us, as we study the word with him. The seventh one is faith. And the Greek is pistis. And faith is a conviction of the truth of anything. It's a belief. Now, we can believe for anything. I can believe if I sit on that chair, that chair is going to hold me up. I do not believe if I'm sitting in that chair, I'm going to fall to the ground. I have faith that if I sit in that chair, it's going to hold me up. I have faith that standing here at this podium, this pulpit, that it's not going to just collapse on me. That's faith. I have faith to believe when I walk in the house and flip the switch, I'm going to have lights. So we can have faith. The Bible says the devils believe and tremble, but they're not going anywhere but to hell. So what do you have faith in? It, it must be a conviction that God exists and he is the creator and the ruler of all things. That he is the provider and the bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. That's what your faith must be. It's a strong and welcome conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah. And like I, like I, like I said, this person whom I spoke with this weekend, I kind of suspect that he didn't have faith in Christ, but he finally came out and says it, point blank. But you have to have a, a faith in Christ and nothing else. Second Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. How do we get that kind of faith that pleases God? Hebrews eleven six tells us the only pleasure that God has is our faith in him. That we believe. That he is who he says he is. That he will do what he says he will do. And that he's a rewarder of those who diligently, sometimes we have to diligently seek him. It doesn't come easy. The enemy does not allow it to be. And that's his job. Our job is to diligently seek God. How do we get that faith? Romans 10, 17 tells us faith comes by hearing, not just with the ear, but with a heart that's tuned to obey God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our faith comes as the Holy Spirit reveals God's word to us and as we obey it. Faith grows, but our love for him grows. And that's how he comes to know us. Luke 18, 8, Jesus says, Nevertheless, 
when the Son of Man comes, shall he find such faith on the earth? Not only that day when he comes again, but now when he comes to you for any reason, will he find faith? Or do we just give up? Oh, I don't see it happening. God must not love me. That's not faith. That's not faith. Then number eight is meekness. And that Greek is praotese. Praotese. And it's gentleness. Some of these words overlap. Gentleness. Mildness. By implication, humility. Timothy 3.2 says, To speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, no na 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 na. The police has to be called because you're brawling. To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. One of the first things that we do when we turn to God is meekness, humility. Without it. We're wasting our time. See, we're powerful people in the Lord. Even outside of the Lord, we see people being powerful. They do a lot of powerful, evil stupidity that hurts so many. Like going and bombing down a building where thousands die. Going and bombing a school or shooting up a school. So we can do powerfully stupid things that hurt other people. But we can be powerful in the Lord. We can be powerful. Our power is sourced from the Lord. So it's got to be Him. And we're humble under Him. When we come out from under Him and use our power, all evil breaks loose. Because then we serve Satan. Then he can use us to do his work. He needs bodies also to do his work. So we can choose to come under the umbrella of God's power and goodness and love and serve from under him. Or we can come out and serve the devil. And that's what too many are doing in this hour. So many are out from under the power of God. The Bible says, one of the signs of his coming is apostasy. And that apostasy means a falling away. Many who call themselves Christians are turning to Muslim. They're turning to Hinduism. They're turning to witchcraft. They're turning atheism. They're just turning away. Don't be part of the prophecy that there's going to be a turning away. So we need meekness under God, and that meekness will show in our behavior towards each other. And then the ninth one is temperance. Temperance. And the Greek is ekratia, and it means self-control. The virtue of one who masters his desires and passions, Especially his sensual appetites. This one right here is one that we Christians really need to work in us today. If you are saved, the nine fruit of the Spirit is in you. But it's like an acorn, a little tiny acorn with the potential to be a mighty oak that produces millions of acorn. We have to put it in the best of circumstances where it can grow and become that oak. Same with us. We have the potential in us for these nine fruit to work and cause us to be like him. And this temperance, I've never seen it so out of control like it is. It bothers me that children are being sexually used by men. Children, little bitty children, because 
of lack of temperance. They can't keep their zipper up. They can't keep their minds stayed on the truth. There was a time when children and women were so respected, but don't be surprised. One of the characteristics of the Antichrist against Christ is that he has no desire of women. And so it's no surprise we see women being so abused and little children being so abused and this antichrist spirit causing women to lose natural affection for their children I was listening to this young girl oh, I wish I could remember her name but she's on YouTube she's speaking out where her mom and dad groomed her groomed her from a little bitty girl to go on knock on the door of a hotel where a man is waiting where she can sexually pleasure that man and they did it for years and years and years how how can a parent do that to a child and she said they still won't apologize they don't see it as wrong lack of temperance self-control so these five I want to conclude if you are born again you have the nine fruit of the Spirit in you because the Spirit is in you because the Holy Spirit lives in a born-again believer you have those fruit in you I want to end by reading a couple of scriptures the Bible says out of the mouth of two or more witnesses a word is established so I'm going to read something and I'm going to pray I'm just going to read the scriptures to end and the word has life the word is life the word is God himself so as I read it I'm going to trust that the word is going to go forth and speak to your heart we need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us more and more to cause us to be more like Christ by those fruit of the Spirit developing in us. So let me read three witnesses. I'm going to read Peter, Paul, and end with Jude. So here's what Peter says. Second Peter 1, 3, and may Holy Spirit Speak into your heart as I read. Speak into my heart. According as his divine power has given unto us all things pertaining unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby we are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this give all diligence add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to your knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, agape love. For if, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he who lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and your election sure for if you do these things you shall never fall fail fall you shall never fall for an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly 
into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Paul, I'm sorry, so Peter tells us if we allow these fruit to work in us, it will cause our lives to blossom and be pleasing to God and we will not fall. And when the end comes, we can be ushered into everlasting eternal life. Let's go to Paul's testimony. Paul in Colossians 3 verse 3. If you then are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify, kill, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in which you also walk before time when you lived in them, but now you also put off. Put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing you've put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is in all. And and Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgive you, so also do you. And above all these things, put on agape, love, charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not to men. Knowing that the Lord 
knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he that does wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done, and there is no respecter of persons. Final witness, Jude. From the book of Jude, beginning with verse 17, verse chapter 1. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual. They do not have the spirit, but you, beloved, build up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by flesh. Now, unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Bear fruit of righteousness, fruit that Jesus will recognize in the end, so that he can say to you in that last day, well done, enter the nine fruit of the Spirit, not counterfeit, not fake, but his, his character will become your character. As you interact with the Holy Spirit through the Word of God, as you spend time in prayer and supplication, as you spend time with the people of God, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance will become your glory. Amen? This is real. This is real. This is no fake and pretend. We've got to become more like him. Or we'll never hear him say in the end, enter. And we need to hear it. We need it now on the earth. Amen. God bless you. Should he say the same, I will speak with you Sunday. I'm excited about what God is doing our children are getting ready to go back to school. Some have started already. Keep them in prayer. Our children are under such attack. Listen, when God got ready to save Israel, he chose Moses. And as a baby, Moses was attacked. All the children who were Moses were born boys, the Pharaoh says, kill them all. So we see that great attack. Did it succeed? No. No. Moses led the people out of Egypt, just like God said. But the enemy will try. Don't let him get you and your family. And then when God sent Jesus as the deliverer, what happened? The enemy attacked. The enemy said, kill all the babies. Two and under, kill him. Did he succeed? No. But he's at it again with the children. I've never seen such attack on our children as I see now. Changing their gender. Listen, you can cut it off. You can tuck it up. You can plaster it. You can do what you want with it. It's not going to change who you were born to be. 
You were born either a man or a woman, and it's not going to change because the doctors give you a few pills or cut a few things up or because the president makes a decree, a legal decree. It's not going to change. Don't be fooled. But because it's so prevalent right now, even the Christians are being pulled in. Stand. Stand for the truth or you'll fall for anything. The end is close. The end is close. Cling to Christ. Amen? I'll talk with you soon. Lydia, I love you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. I'm believing God for you and your family. Amen? Aunt Eslin, I'm believing God for you and your family. Also, I'm praying for you all. God bless you. I'll talk with you soon.